from LPI Studios in Memphis, Tennessee. It's R and R on Sports with Uncle Howard. Howard Robertson. NFL grossed 13 billion in 2016. NBA 6 billion. Jennifer Conroy. Last year it was very distinctly and unanimously, I might add, Curry. To now everybody stepped their game up. And the magnificent Larry Robinson. I think they're extremely hungry for the playoffs. I don't think these guys like going through the dog days of the season. It's R&R on sports. Hello and welcome to R&R on sports. I'm Uncle Howard. I'm Jennifer Conroy. And I have the most amazing, the most fantastic, and I will not be rook. We don't bluff. We out of Memphis, baby. What's up, America? Larry Robinson. <laughs> funky Larry Robinson. <laughs> Ladies and Wait, gentlemen, we about? just we got through hearing funk. a story about how this guy, uh, guy has not washed jeans he in should, a year. I don't think he should tell this people is, that. But yet he is breaking out <laughs> on his legs. So I, this is a nasty man. What um, happened was. Anyway, anyway, let's talk about, let's talk about Dave. Fisdale, coach. We will not be rookie. David Fisdale firing up rookie. the Grizzly faithful. What do y'all think about what he said? Valid or whatever? Did course, he have enough yes. data for you? He did have enough data for me. I liked it. And you know, John Hollinger is the king of data. He is the uh, creator of the data. So I liked what Fisdale said. And he's right. And it needed to be said. I don't know if he needed to say it $30,000 worth, but Everybody else, people have said worse for oh, 25. Much, much worse. No, for 25. No, yeah, for 25. K. They added a couple extra on it. They disrespected him again, yeah. charging him 30K well, for. Uh, I, th- I think it's the fact that, number one, he took the pen, he slammed it down. He went all he had in. had the data. He, he went he just, all he in. He said that they were incompetent. But he never cursed. No, he did he not. Never, I mean, no, you know, he, it could have been a lot he worse. Caused, but he called, he, he, he made major, he caused major dispersion. On the on the uh, on the official, but you know this is not our first rodeo here in the in terms of the Grizzlies. I, I said this on a on another show. Um, our theme song in Memphis could be could come directly from Annie. It's a hard not, not life. life. Yeah, we could have like I whooped mean, that we trick. We always though. get disrespected, and and from a referee standpoint, there is a, a currently retired. Bless your heart. Hope you stay there. Hope you <laughs> I know who you're never talking about. look at the NBA <laughs> again. Um, who is who we used to come Joey here? No. <laughs> oh yeah. We talking about Joey I am not yes. calling any names. <laughs> We got a lady out there don't like us either. When fans, Memphis uh, Grizzlies fans would come in and sit down and see him before the game, they'd go, oh my God. Okay, now let me ask you this. Mike Conley has a clean record in terms of technical fouls. Do you think that that plays into how he gets called? I think so. I think he doesn't... doesn't, He doesn't complain a lot, and he doesn't, you know, the squeaky wheel gets the oil. And they know it will be he, little he, reaction. He, Refs know it will be yeah. little reaction. He says virtually nothing, you, and he's not an all-star. No, so he's not. So that's another thing. And you get he's away with what you tolerate, and he tolerates the disrespect. And I feel like at some point, if either he or Gasol, I mean, heck, Vince Carter got has, attacked. But I don't think he has the gravitas. No, he I doesn't. Think, I don't think he has the gravitas to actually elicit any concern because he's not an all-star point guard. But to date, he is very gritty, though. He is very gritty. He can still complain. That, that doesn't stop him from complaining. I mean, you know, uh, how, how close do you have to get to James Harden to get a foul call? He's an all-star. How, you bri- I don't care. Keep I don't care. I, I mean, he's care. an MVP candidate, care. so is Kawhi. All-star okay. is a popularity contest. I don't Whatever. care that he's an all-star. Whatever. It, it means a lot, and it's popular. That means that he's unpopular then. If oh, he, popular, oh, Mike, contest, Mike Conley? Ooh, if, he's a, if, he's a, if he's a, if that's it's a popular he, contest and he's not getting calls. But he and, likes that tag. And he's not an all-star. It's because he's unpopular. Well, and that oh, means that, and that means that. That's stating I have the less, obvious. But no, but that means that the, the refs will not get the fan He doesn't back. get the benefit of the he doubt. He doesn't get the fan. They don't get the fan blow Even how when they make him bleed. It, how do you think uh, all of these things will affect the calls tonight? I think it'll. I think it'll have a huge effect on the game. Uh, on Thursday. Thursday. <laughs> Thursday. Yeah, I think the Excuse game me. Thursday will will definitely be I, uh, called a little different. I think Mike Conley needs to get will a watch. Tech. Everyone okay. will watch. Everyone will pay attention, and we'll be us uh, making special attention to 
what the refs call and if they call anything in the paint. Don't and let if the them Grizzlies rook you, smart, Mike. If the Grizzlies are smart, they'll pound in the paint like, they, like they've been doing in the previous games. Absolutely. And speaking, it'll, force the, it'll force the refs to make a call. And speaking of attention, we hope you are paying attention and staying right with us. Don't go anywhere. Back with more r and on Sports after this. Hello, gentlemen, and thank you for coming. I am Mary Catherine Higginbottom, Ph.D., and I'm the head psychologist for this youth football league. You gentlemen are coaches, I believe, and have been called into this office before. I'm Larry Robinson, M.B.A., parent and assistant coach. And I'm Rages Robinson, U.N.C., oh my. an assistant coach. You're a U.N.C. Tar Heel. What she call me? A tar what? Girl, I'll whoop you. Uncle Rages. I mean, I'm U.N.C. as in uncle. But nice to meet you, Miss Heinebottom. It's Dr. Higginbottom, which brings me to our first concern. You cannot continue to call these young men out of their names. Research has shown... And studies have proven the use of nicknames is deleterious to building self-esteem and positive self-awareness. I can't believe using nicknames is unacceptable. Well, it is. And especially huh? when you don't even know their given name. Yeah, I do. Because I give them names sometimes. I'll prove it. Do you know who Nefarious Jenkins is? Uh, That's uh, Nene. That's Nene. Oh, yeah. Nene. Nene, my best pulling guard. That boy sure enough can block. What? What about Tredacus Brown? Now, that's either Trey Trey. Or uh, is it Day Day? And there's Nugdurious Washington. Little Nug Nug. Whoa. <laughs> now, little Nug Nug can catch a greased BB. You must start calling them by their proper names or stop giving them to them. Speaking of names, I understand you have violated another policy. What's the team nickname? It's the Tigers. That is wrong. The team nickname is the Golden Retriever. <sighs> Tigers are too fierce and inappropriate oh, for this man. age group. Oh, my Lord, 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 Lord. And in this league, there are no losers because we don't keep score. That makes everyone a winner. Oh, boy. This is the wussification of our kids. Mm. Lord, have mercy. Mm. Mm. Furthermore, do not chastise your players. You what? were heard telling a player he was playing like he had panties. Yeah. I take offense to that. That's an affront to everyone who currently wears or perhaps formerly wore mm. panties. So I'm afraid I'm going to have to suspend both of you coaches. What? You can't do that. Uh, 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 Doc. I can't. Let me have a word with you. Now, look here. Oh, Here's what oh, I do. Oh, my. You can, you can do yeah, that. I, um, yeah. Oh, oh. Well, well, I'll not be too hasty, and I'll take this under advisement. It's a little hot. Pending another meeting. Uh, what's your num- number, Mr. Rages? Uh, j- just call me Ragey Boo, baby. Uh, now, would you be in the current or the former panty wearing group? My name is Michael Eric Dyson, and you listen to R&R on Sports. See, I'm change. And we are back. Hope you got your laugh on. Uh, LMAO. Uh, but so much to talk about. There is so much to talk about where to start. Let's start generally in terms of the uh, playoffs. Anything jumping off uh, with regard uh, to the playoffs? Do you guys think Boston I, is in trouble? I yes, think Boston is in big trouble. I think number one, but no one pays attention to this. Boston does not have anybody that's won it you know, at the high levels of the NBA. I mean, we're talking about probably single digit in playoff wins outside of, uh, um, what's my man, uh, Horford. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, he needs to he show up. He Where hadn't been he? showing up either. No, no, no. I, I, I mean, hadn't seen him. Outside of Horford, they really doesn't have a very experienced club. Now, you look at Chicago, you have Rondo at the point, yep. champion. And yeah. Rondo is being vintage Rondo oh, right Rondo now. Is yeah. being much so vintage yeah. Rondo. You got D Wade. Then you got D Wade, three time champion. Absolutely. Yep. Who and I didn't expect to be star. back either. And then you got Jimmy, Jimmy Butler, Butler, who's really made Ooh, himself ballin'. into a phenomenal all star level is player. Balling. So you got three very, very uh, experienced, and you have two players that have. A lot of uh, championship experience. And there also might be some TNT voodoo going on because the Bulls have a perfect record when they have been on TNT this season. 
Well, it's something else. If Did you, you say doo doo or voodoo? Voodoo. voodoo. <laughs> the voodoo well, that listen, you do. Well, listen. You know the bulls. The bulls have basically swept the uh, Cavs this year too. Yep. So you know you got to think about these boys know how to play. Yep. And it's just been some dysfunction, and I think that dysfunction is with Fred Hoiberg, the coach. I yeah, see something. I agreed. I see something else that I think that's troubling. Uh, should be troubling for them. You know, the psyche of a of a of a team sometimes can be very very fragile, and yeah. I believe theirs is tremendously fragile, particularly after, yeah. um, you know, the the, the unfortunate uh, incident with uh, Isa- Isaiah's quickly, uh, quickly. Do sister. You, do you have a problem with what uh, Charles Barkley said? Yes. Yes. Really? Why? Well, you I don't. Mean, I don't care if it makes him you, uncomfortable. You, absolutely. That. Come on. He's I don't a, think you got to really th- listen is, to what this, the essence this is, of what he this was is, saying. This is emotion and this is reaction. I mean, it, it was sprung on on this kid and whatnot, and so his reaction to it is unpredictable and it's not for your uh, edification. I mean, yeah. it, this is not. He's. It, this is not a show or anything. This is. Him reacting, I think Charles should have well, leave that alone. You, you leave that up, alone. You, you, let the kid grieve like he grieves. In, you stand and support the fact that he showed up for his team and he's going through it, and that alone deserves a little bit of some respect. Some things, okay, so wait a some things now, Charles now doesn't at, need now, to wait speak a minute, to. That was one at of it them. From a layman's perspective, think about it this way: when NBA players talk about basketball and inside the 94 feet, they talk about it being their solitary, their solitude. Yeah. It's where they get away from everything else. Yeah. So I kind of look at it, what Charles was saying is that when it comes to the court, that's when everything is okay. And clearly he wasn't okay. I mean, for him to be crying during the, you know, the national anthem, crying before the game, doing shoot around. I mean, it seemed like he was at a, a, a very – uh, what would you say, distraught over the process, over his sister being uh, being uh, being killed. So I understand that, but what he was saying, and Charles is not the most eloquent person in the world. So, so he oh, said, truly? So, so he says, so he <laughs> no. says it's not a good look. And I think he was saying that it, it, it was disturbing because of how he was crying and the fact that he could not control his emotions. And maybe he should not have said anything, but I think that what he was saying, That's what, I'm what saying. he was saying was that, was that he must really not be at a level uh, emotionally to play, being that he can't stop crying and he can't get on with the business of basketball, which he's, when you're in the middle of that court, close, when you're inside of those Close feet, your mouth. You don't have to well, that's comment not what he's on paid, everything. Well, that's not yeah, there are, that, I, I never, I never heard comment. him, I never heard him say that about these uh, kids that cry uh, in college that like when Wait after they minute, lose we're, we're like somebody died like somebody player. died that, we're still, talking about a professional look, player and a that's professional not, game. but it would have been that's one thing it, it would have been one thing on. if following that Isaiah, Isaiah he Thomas had, had walked on the on it. He, he that's did, his job but he could have been just kind just like it's our job to talk smack and talk stuff it's his job to no, talk your job is Listen, not to pants. speak on everything. Your <laughs> Y'all job interrupting. Is to have, oh, Y'all trying me. to rook me. Excuse me. <laughs> it would have been different if Isaiah Thomas had stepped on the court and not performed well. Did he perform up to the standards that we've this seen him that got game. him the number this one spot? This is before the game. But when this it came down to it, the game. Isaiah Thomas stepped on the court and he did his thing and he carried it. Now, that being said, after two game loss, the the rest of his teammates have come out and said, we really, you know, we had our heads down. We showed them our weakness. And maybe that's where Charles was trying to go with it. From emotional Do they standpoint. turn things around in Chicago? No. No. In, in Chicago? <laughs> that was, the, that was you, unanimous. You think? You think no. The, no, I don't Boston think they will. No. I, personally, Absolutely I don't not, think they will. Because I think the thing still, your, your best player is a 5'9 guy. And it's easy to neutralize a five. It's easier to neutralize a five though. nine player. Well, particularly when other uh, the other four are not are, rising to the yeah, occasion. You don't have anybody yeah. that can create their shot. Next on that year, whole team. they right. will be dangerous. So okay. let's talk about Paul George. He Paul has a lot George to say currently. Has a lot to say. Um, so let's let's deal with the series well, first. Know, have the Pacers missed a, missed their window of opportunity to do anything substantial with uh, they Cleveland? They wouldn't. They wouldn't have done anything if they hadn't brought back Lance Stevenson. It lets you know that there are certain players that fit perfectly yep. in a certain system. Yep. And Lance Stevenson going back to Indiana, where he never should have left in the first place, was the perfect additive for that team the way it's constructed. Now, as it relates to Cleveland, 
it wouldn't matter one way or the other. They weren't going to beat Cleveland, and we all know that. We all know that no. we got LeBron James, the Kang, that is going to be <laughs> is going to be they who he Kang, is. Kang. So you know, so and I don't think that Cleveland will be challenged until they get to probably the conference championships or maybe even the, the maybe the latter part of the second round. But I, I don't think uh, I don't think they'll be challenged. Do, do you think that? Do you think that Lance will blow on LeBron again? Now, I don't know how that should be taken. You know, you <laughs> need to look, watch look, look, Before I mean, y'all he, get crazy. He blew, <laughs> you know, I what am a, the only person sitting at this table what, that blew Lance uh, Stevenson uh, back. What about... Ru- <laughs> and we have photographic evidence of it. You know, we, we're we trying to move on, and you just keep going back to... Right in his ear. Some real I rooked him. <laughs> what, what about Russell? What about Russell? Data. OKC, do they do anything with... Russell uh, said, I don't give a... Bye, with about, the Rockets the trip, tonight in OK... Oh, no, tomorrow. Oh, whatever. In OKC, they're down at this point. I think they get a game. Oh, two. And possibly two. I, as I said he last did? week, as I said last week, if Russell is able to pull these guys out of this out of this series and get into the conference championships, we will be looking at possibly the second coming of Michael Jordan. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You got to say, did you he, see he the have game? To. Did you see Harden the other night? Yeah. Did you see Harden the other night? Yeah. And we had talked about MVP. He made a very, very strong yes, performance case. But it shouldn't against... count because MVP. Well, no, the it MVP depends. vote has regular, already been turned regular in. Series. It regular series. Yeah, it's been turned, 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 turned in. in. And you can't. Right. It's a regular okay. season okay. Right. thing. But, but I still but say. For the MVP Russell of the series. is the MVP. If it's already be tur- been league. turned in, he is. He is. No doubt. Now, beyond that, he still put. 51 on them. Yeah, he, did. he put 51. Got the highest points ever uh, of a triple double in the playoffs. Yeah, he did. History of the NBA. We ain't yeah, talking about in the last 15 years. We ain't talking about in the last five years. Ever. We're talking about ever. Man, the dude is doing something that's never been done before, and we got to get you know put a, put a, put respect on his name. No matter put how he dresses, on his season and all that. Yeah, he he's, he he what looks is pretty that? crazy. We got a have fantastic show. Have you been dressing him? I, I, I'm I'm dressing Mike Conley currently oh, with okay. Michael Jackson okay. as my uh, beaded inspiration. <laughs> Billy Jean is not my lover. Who we got? Who we got Fantastic on the show? Fantastic show. Who Our conversation. Show? We're coming back on the other side with ESPN's own Scoop Jackson. Scoop. <laughs> and and uh, the continuation of the interview. You know, continuation is the first part of the interview with oh. Tyreek Black. Oh, okay. We're going to find out what he think about these fools in the NBA. You know, Kobe. Uh, LeBron and all of them. The Lakers. <laughs> Did you know that, Black. that Tarek plays piano? Trumpet. He's yeah, a trumpet, trumpet girl. player. But he don't took, be talk, don't he be took piano don't be at KU. Don't be talking that to okay. Wilson's family. Piano right. at girl, KU. Girl, listen now. Don't be talking what you don't know. Chalk. Jayhawk. Y'all stay with us. We'll be back after this. This is your boy, Chris Brown. David West of the Golden State Warriors. Hey, this is Dr. J. This is Shaq Adoshi. Yo, what's up? This is Ice Cube. This is Nicki Minaj. And you're listening to a little R&R. and r R&R. and r and on sports. Lucky for you, that's what I like. That's what I like. Lucky for you, that's what I like. That's what I like. Search by the And we're back with iConversation, and we want to welcome a regular with us that we are very, very pleased to say. And we want to do it in a very special way, a way that he has never been introduced before, uh, a la Ohio players like Scoop, 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 Scoop. You got the falsetto. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> Larry was supposed to come in with the other part. Because you can't, you can't leave that Scoop. part to the white girl. Yes, me and Scoop Jackson. Welcome back to R&R Sports. You're supposed Sports. to do it. It's supposed to be Scoop, Scoop, Scoop. And I'm supposed to go, Scoop. Okay. Is that's, that right? Yeah, but you were late. Larry. Oh, okay. Well, now you, you made fun. Scoop, <laughs> welcome back, man. Glad to have you. <laughs> Now, if y'all could sing better, I would sing. <laughs> okay, I will just say that I wanted to go with a little salt and pepper and scoop, scoop it, oop, but they <laughs> overruled me with the Ohio players. Well, you know, but no, Ohio players are good. You get a little Julie Morrison in there. You get a little sugar nice. in there. That's there you go. Good. There you go. Sing. We, yeah, we knew you yeah, could appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. We knew you could yeah, appreciate that. Jen, if you had gone salt and pepper, they would have, you know, continued this whole, like, uh, um, uh, rumors that you and I got something going on. It would have all. You know what? You know what we should do, Scoop. We should rook them. 
Right. That's, that's, that's true. I give him a little that's data. True. David Fisdale. Maybe Fist. you give me the data. Yeah, right, right. Give, give him some big data. Do some David Fisdale on him. David Fisdale on him. Go David Fisdale on him. What you think about that, man? I think it's a shame that the NBA, well, one, I think he shouldn't have got fined. And uh, but that's that, that's the law. And then he got fined thirty k, not yep. the tri- not the usual twenty five. More disrespect. <laughs> no, I think the extra five was for his last statement about let me take that for big data. Uh-huh. Right, yeah. right, uh-huh. right, you know, right. Okay. But my thing is that I think at some point that we should have all chipped in and paid for him. Well, with Service Master, you know, and we like we should you should have gone to like a you know uh, uh, GoFundMe. GoFundMe. There, <laughs> there actually <laughs> there is a Fizdale find GoFundMe. Oh, is there? Really? There it is. Should be. It should okay. Be. It, should it should be. be. Yeah. So his fine's going to be paid by Service Master, the Grizzlies players, yeah, and now they, the public at yeah. large. All of, us, yeah, all of us. All of us should contribute to that. All of us. You know, and I think it's a shame for the NBA. You know, I've said this for a long time, not just right now, but since this is, seems to be the topic of discussion. You know, I think it's a shame for the NBA and, and, and maybe all sports for them to penalize and fine for criticisms of referees as if they're not human beings absolutely and they absolutely yeah. as if you they're know, infallible I, I that, it's, well, right. it's well, censorship all he is is giving them a god well think about it one i think is giving them a god complex over the years because mm-hmm. they can't be criticized by anybody not by coaches not by players you know and and, not and by they the don't allow them to talk to the press mm-hmm. they don't allow them so that's another thing they don't even have to answer for their own right situations right. over so it's giving them a god complex and the nba is really, really protected them. Now, other leagues do it too, but I think the NBA is the most egregious with it. Now, if you think about it, the NBA a couple of years ago went through this transparency policy, where they right. said, all right, we're going to go through and review everything. And even with that, they still side with the referees. They said, well, hey, you know what? The ref made a bad call at the end of the game. It shouldn't have been a foul. It shouldn't have been a travel. It shouldn't have been a goal. To whatever the call is, it shouldn't have been that. And the NBA puts out that memo, but does nothing to change the yep. outcome or whatever happened during yep. the game. Absolutely. It still stays the same. It There's is no what it is, right. So, right. So I'm like, if you're able to acknowledge mistakes being made, then, as a lead, then why should people be punished for calling out what they see as the same mistakes? Right. That doesn't make any sense. It's very hypocritical. Is it a violation of rights to fine him for free speech? Not when there's a collective bargain agreement that you sign on to it. There you, you go. Mm-hmm. It, you agree with that. So mm-hmm. that's so, why, no, folks. It's, 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 yeah. right. This is Iron yeah, Iron Sports, that, that, and we're speaking with thing. ESPN analyst and commentator and personality, Scoop Jackson. Um, it Hopefully, hopefully it will do something. He, he tapped into the, the true, very spirit of the Grizzly organization and Memphis, if you will, in terms of the character. I mean, disrespect has long lived here. And um, so hopefully that'll do something to fire him up. But uh, I thought what he said about uh, Pop was very, very interesting because we all know that uh, Popovich is, is, is revered in the NBA and that yeah. he's a rookie coach, and he will not, he won't be rooked. He won't be rook rooked. us. Won't be rooked. So <laughs> let me let me ask you this, man. I mean, as we look at this, uh, as we look at this MVP conversation and battle between James Harden and Russell Westbrook, what's been your thoughts so far? Uh, a couple games in. Oh well, I mean, uh, that's that's a good question. Well, one, I'm not looking at that as the battle between the two. The help make a decision on who's MVP because those, the games they're playing now are meaningless towards, right. That's, you know, that, that, that the decision's MVP. already made. Like, right. Um, and, and they judge who I think is like the better player, who, you know, whatever, you, who I start a team with, all the conversations. You know, it's hard to do. I, 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 want, to, I, I want to see the battle. Right. You know, I want to see them really, really grab one another. They came close yesterday. I think um, Russell, you know, he, he, just, he had a bad fourth quarter. Phenomenal games is a bad fourth yeah. quarter. Mm-hmm. Um, and, I've heard people on radio and heard people in the streets, you know, talk about, you know, it seemed like they reverted back to their, they hate Russell campaign, <laughs> you know, and he's selfish and he doesn't do the same. And I'm like, I don't know how a guy can be selfish and only looking out for himself and he still has 15 assists in a game. I don't, I don't, I don't know how that works. Yep. You know, I just think he took some bad shots. But to me, it's interesting how all that is placed, that onus is placed on the player when in no time did any, I heard one person say, and this is the entire fourth quarter. What was it, four, for 17, whatever, from the fourth quarter? But at no time I heard anybody put the onus on Billy Donovan. Mm-hmm. No. Call the timeout, say, look, you know, you wonder why Pop is revered? 
if I don't see that ball move around four times before a shot, somebody's sitting down. Somebody's yep. sitting down. <laughs> right. yep. It's going to be you a problem. You know what I'm saying? They yeah. act like the coach, like yeah. Russell, like for eight minutes in the game, there were no timeouts, and Billy Donovan didn't do one thing to change Russell Westbrook's nope. mindset. Right. Nope. Right. So nobody's saying that, but everybody's putting the punishment on the player. And what do players do? They play. They go out there and do what they know best to do. And if you're a scorer, if, if you score, you keep shooting. Because the shooting is going to drop. Keep but that's who he is. Than what we saw Steph Curry do a couple of times in the conference finals last year and in the finals. Mm-hmm. Right. You just exactly. shoot until it drops. Mm-hmm. That's what you do. And, in case, and unless the coach is there or your coach is there, or another player, whether you have a Draymond Green on your squad, is going to check or change that, then that's going to be the M.O. And it kills me how people out there dog and Russell Westbrook saying he's, you know, selfish, you know, because he had a bad fourth quarter, you know, but he still had 15 assists. And if you really go back at it, look at talk about he shot 43 times. Look how many times Michael Jordan shot in that game against Boston when he dropped 63. Right. Wow. Yep. And he damn sure didn't have 15 assists. <laughs> 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 well, last year. But I don't went, hear anybody this, screaming. I don't hear anybody screaming about Michael's self. It's in my penal self, whatever. This is Iron Iron Sports, and we're speaking with ESPN personality Scoop Robert Scoop Jackson. How fragile at this point are the Celtics? I think they may be stronger coming to Chicago. Do you? Um, I, think getting away, I think getting away from Boston and, you know, kind of distancing himself a little bit from uh, all the emotion that was there uh, revolving around the death of Isaiah Thomas' sister. Yep. I think that would help. I think it would give them a breath of fresh air. Um, I also think that the Bulls can be a totally different team. At you home. Know, and being home. here in and watching it from game to game, I, I've, I've called them bipolar before. Mm-hmm. I agree. But I think incons- inc- 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 calling them inconsistent is you know, an insult to inconsistency. <laughs> they, you know, you never know what team is going to show up and for how long with this Bulls team. But you know what's so, going to show up if they're on TNT. Th- that could help. To answer your fragility question with the Boston Celtics, have we gotten any details, because I haven't looked, on the service situation with Isaiah Thomas' sister? Have they laid out when the service It's on be? hold. The last that I heard, he was traveling to be with his family today and would right. rejoin. So it's on hold, the okay, service that, part. That yeah, would play into it as well. Yeah. About. Yeah. Right, because I think you can play through as he did Sunday. Or Saturday. Was Sunday? Saturday? Yeah, as he did Sunday. You can play through it in the immediate situation, but as you know, all the business side of somebody passing away hits you and you're a member of the family, a direct member of the family, right. and you have to be involved in that, right. that's when it really starts taking its toll. So a, yeah. I'm saying that the Bulls could be a whole different team when Boston shows up to Chicago, and I think getting out of that space in Boston may be good for the rest of the team. But on the flip side of that, the deeper you get into the situation and the closer it gets to the burial and the services mm-hmm. and all this, that and the other, that's going to weigh heavier on Isaiah Thomas. And he... His play may digress as opposed to staying where it is right now. Um, who are you predicting? Uh, are you predicting an upset in the in the first round? Well, I, if, if you look at Chicago and Boston being an upset, then yeah, I, I've had that from the beginning. Okay. And I also had Utah beating the Clippers, but that was before Rudy Gobert went down. So, uh-huh. um, in my mind, those are the two that stuck out in my head. Um, other than that. I can't, I don't think anybody else is in true jeopardy of, you know, um, lose, you know, of, of losing in the first round. Um, are you that, impre- that's not supposed to lose in the first round. Are you impressed with anybody? Anybody that's like you, you've really looked at and said, wow, these, these guys look really good? Hmm, that's a good question. Um, other than, other than the Grizzlies. I, <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, I expected what I'm seeing out of the Grizzlies. <laughs> I and bet you crazy did. As it, crazy as this may sound. Crazy as it may sound, the team that's actually impressed me is Indiana. Okay. Huh. Really? Even though they've okay. lost to, you know, uh, uh, Cleveland, they've actually, for the most part, been in most games and have tested Cleveland. They tested them a lot harder the first game, which should have been their victory. But, you know, they closed the gap on Cleveland in the fourth quarter in the other game and at least made it interesting, and they fought. Now, you know, Paul George's post, you know, made comments aside. You know, that's been the team that I thought, one, I didn't think they are going to make this playoff. You know, so I'm surprised right. they didn't get in at 70. But the fact that they are able to challenge 
And Marcus Teague has not played, you know, he has not played well. You know what I'm saying? And Monty yeah. Ellis has not played well. True. So they've actually hung with Cleveland, in Cleveland, on the road, without having two of their players step up the way they need to step up. Right, right. You know, so I'm like, that. They, they, they have, I've actually been impressed by them, even, even, even in their loss. All right, all right. Scoop, we could talk to you all day, and uh, we're going to get that opportunity one day. But we want to thank you for being back with us. And, uh, you know, we're like a bad nickel, man. We keep showing up. So we're going to be back <laughs> back to you some, hey, man. Ba- sometime soon. Bad nickel, good nickel. Bad nickel, good nickel. You're still worth five cents, man. There you go. Absolutely. There you go. There you go. Still worth a nickel. <laughs> Thanks for being with us. Thanks we'll be lot, back for more R&R on Sports after this. For you, that's what I like. That's what I like. Lucky for you. Hello, I'm Howard Robertson. J to the C. And I am the magnificent, the amazing, the phenomenal Larry Robertson. All right here on r r on Sports, on the Sports Byline Network, every Saturday yes. morning. This is the best way to start your weekend. To catch us, receive us, pass us on oh, to ooh, your friends. Wasn't that cute? Yeah. That was, yeah. Wasn't that cute? We also got some of the best interviews doing our eye conversation segment. Every Saturday morning, 11 a.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Central, 8 a.m. Pacific. R&R on Sports. Part of the Kazookian Network. Jim Mooney. Hey, this is Dr. J. Hi, this is Freaka Ketchy. This is John Hogger, Vice President of Basketball Operations for the Memphis Grizzlies. Tim Brown, NFL Hall of Fame and Duck T. You are listening to R&R on Sports. And we are back with our conversation. And we have with us third year Los Angeles Lakers player Tariq Black. Now, off mic, I was asking you formally, mm-hmm. are you a center or f- a power forward because we know the lines have been blurred, blurred. tremendously. It's so technically, I think you would be what a power guard, list? though, Howard. Uh, I think I think if we if we put a, a, a label or a position on you, you'd be a, a power guard. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Larry. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, new position. Yeah, new yeah, position. Yeah, yeah. What do you call it? You play, you'd be the two a, and a half. A one point five yeah, or two and a half. Two and a half. <laughs> Go ahead, I'm man. sorry, man. I I officially is center, um, center power four because I've started in both positions. Okay. But I, that's what I liked about the 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 Lakers situation and, and what I was talking about earlier with right. Houston and Lakers and, and Lakers you get to experience more. So my rookie year, I was starting at the power four spot on offense, but on defense I was starting at the three. Okay. And so we went to Cleveland. I started on LeBron. We went to Brooklyn. I was on um, at the time was it Joe Johnson. Joe jo- okay. I was on Joe Johnson. We went to Utah. I started on um, Ingles, and so. I had like a five or ten game stretch Mm -hmm. where I was starting on the threes. Mm -hmm. And so officially I was a power four in that moment because (laughs) I was starting at the power four spot. But I was guarding the three. And in this past season, in my third year, I had a portion where me and Zubats were starting together. Or we were playing together. And we were playing together. I think I would start, or he would start, and I would sub in. But regardless, at that time I I was coming in at the four. And so it's kind of been up and down, but all in all, is like, there a preference? Honestly, for me, I really have let that go because that honestly serves as a mental block when you put a preference, especially in today's NBA where right. guys have moved around so all much. Like, think about place, it. Yeah. They had Dirk playing the five yeah. in this NBA. Starting off his first few years, never, never. He would always be at the four. And so in today's NBA, it doesn't really matter to me because I switch on guards. Like, we have games where the coach say, well, Tark, we're switching one through five. So if I switch, I'm on Steph. Okay. I'm on Kyrie. <laughs> you know, so it's just – in today's NBA, it really does – it's just all about you, what you can do and how you can perform. Great, 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 great. great. All right, now, I want to play a little game. And listen, America, we're sitting here with Tark Black of the Los Angeles Lakers. And this guy could rattle off names of, of the best players in the league – and I just want him to add a little context, just a little bit of context to these different names that we're going to bring out. So we're going to play a little game of player association. Okay. All right, so the first player we're going to name, and you keep it short. We yes, don't sir. Want you to keep, we don't want you to get too long-winded. Yes, sir. Well, you got to keep LeBron it short because Le- your, your question is about 20 minutes <laughs> at this point. 
Go hey, on, that's finish. That's I don't like you. We're going to cut your mic off, finish. man. We're going to cut your mic off. All right, LeBron James. Great. He's amazing. Yeah, I'm probably the best all-around player in the NBA. All right, all right. Uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo. Um, I said I said our and that's the Greek year. freak. Yes, I said our rookie year. I saw him and Jabari working out, and I said everybody's talking about Jabari Parker, but watch that guy. I said really? that at that time, our rookie year, and everybody's like, he can't really shoot, he can't. Now look at him, and he's only gonna get better. The sky's the limit for him. He actually is gonna be a guy that's gonna be. I I personally believe can. He's not maybe argue you could say whether he's gonna be like a LeBron or whether he's gonna reach his level, but I mean like as far as in that category of a player that can do everything, mm-hmm. man, that dude's gonna be amazing. Cool, 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 cool. All right, Dwight Howard. Uh, man, just his dominance. Like he he can get on the floor and like once he grabs you, once he wants to rebound, once he wants to dunk on you, whatever he wants to do. He can do it. He's the best teammate you ever have. I want one the best teammate wow. you will ever wow. have. Wow. Yeah. That's phenomenal. My That's one word would be shoulders. <laughs> yeah, yeah those too. <laughs> all right, all right. Snapchat fiend. Let's go uh D'Angelo Russell. D'Angelo is a character, man. He's <laughs> oh my goodness. D'Angelo is hilarious, but he he wants to see us prosper. Okay. And, I, and I appreciate that about him, that he's about this team and wants to see us prosper. All right, then we're going to go off the court. Magic Johnson. Man, idol. Okay. Idol, man. You, you talking You talking about the Magic. Like you say, the Ohio State. Right. You're talking about the, <laughs> the Magic, Magic Johnson. Johnson. Oh, man, that's phenomenal. Phenomenal. Uh, one more. Kobe Bryant. Playing a year with – you got to play a year with Kobe. Two. Two years with Kobe. Man, that, and that, that honestly is probably the biggest motiva- motivation I've gotten in being in the NBA. You know, after being cut and all the other things that happened to me, they were they were definitely motivating for me. But seeing the way he left the game inspired the greatness in me and saying, man, if there's any way I can lead a game like that. So you didn't say, man, why you shoot all them times? <laughs> <laughs> no. We, the, so, so the funny story about that one is that during that game, that last game, we told him in the locker room before the game, we said, you're going to shoot every shot. I, I told him, I said, oh, if, really? I, I said, if I get an offensive rebound, you better shoot the ball. He was like, no, y'all, no, just play basketball. I was like, no. We were like, no, you're going to no. shoot. You're going to get 60 <laughs> shots tonight. And we said, go for 60. And he, and he got 60. 60. Yes. Wow. And we did the same thing to Meta this year. Our last game against the Pelicans, we yeah. said, Meta, we're going to try to make you lead a game like Kobe did. Hold we're on, maybe still in my thunder. I was going to say Meta World Peace. Uh, he's like a big brother. Really? That's a big brother. What's it right like there. playing with Meta World Peace? Amazing. Like, Meta getting in the gym with you at 2 in the morning. If you call him and say, Meta, man, I want to get better. Like, he's all about us, the younger guys, getting better. Uh-huh. Like, he's, he's sitting on the bench and be like, Tark, you better shoot a three today. You better shoot a three. Knowing good and well, if I shoot and I miss it, Coach probably going to sub me. Right. Tark, I want to see you go, go off the limb. Do this, do that, do that. And he'll do it to all 15 guys on that bench. Do you see him being a coach? I can see it happening. I can see it definitely, definitely. I can definitely see it happen. But his style, though, like I said, he's going to challenge you and push you to be great and push you – and doing something that you that, that discomforts you. So as a coach, as him being hired, you have to be prepared to hire a coach that's going to push players out of their comfort zone. As a young player, how are you affected by the legend of the Los Angeles Lakers? Man, I'm so inspired. Like I told Coach Are Luke, you intimidated by it in no, any way? No, not at all. Not at all. Because I, like, for me personally, like you said, with my story and playing basketball, I don't have the common, as a kid, me and my dad, we went here and mm-hmm. I played basketball little league and I did this. That's not my story. Mm-hmm. I got cut every year in middle school. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> quit, quit. Did you like, really? go, play, go play your trumpet, bro. I got go cut play every trumpet. year and that's exactly what happened. Go play got, your trumpet. I got cut every year in middle school and I wow. went and played my trumpet. And so being that that's how I came up in the game, I don't have the anxiety that other others have towards the game. For instance, I didn't grow up just watching the, the Lakers play or this team play or that team play. Like I honestly when I was younger, people asked me like who's your favorite college team? The University of Memphis is my favorite, but I had never seen them play. Mm-hmm. You know, because I was a Memphian. You no, know, who's your favorite NBA team? Before the Grizzlies got here, I didn't even 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 know about NBA teams like that. I played video games, but I didn't know like who played for who or any of that stuff. Like I didn't grow up like that. And so even now put on like a jersey it's just pure enjoyment that I get to be a part of the history 
of that, but I can appreciate it because I went to Ridgeway, a very historical Memphis team. I went to University of Memphis, very historical college team. I went to Kansas, probably the most historical college team. When you talk about Dr. Naismith being the first coach, Alan right. Fogg mm-hmm. being the second coach, which is the mm-hmm. father of coaching. You talk about Adolph Rupp, I mean, not Adolph Rupp, Rupp, um, Rupp Arena. Yeah, I don't want to talk about Adolph Rupp. <laughs> State. But yeah, yeah, that's Rupp playing there, Rupp playing there, and then right. you're talking about Will Chamberlain, and then you go down the line, you go down the line of all these great players, and it's like, oh, I'm a part of this history, and plus I made history there. I set a record there. I set a record at Memphis. I set a record with the Lakers. And so you're talking about all these different places I've set records too. And so I actually enjoy it. And like I told Magic and Coach Luke, I said, look, I've put in blood, sweat, and tears here. And I've actually invested myself. And that's what matters to me. It's not necessarily the sport portion. It's when I invest myself in something. And so I invested myself in the Lakers. And I said, well, well, since I've invested myself this much, and I set my bar super high because I play for an organization that the bar is super high. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is this is perfect for me. This is my type of situation. This is Iron Iron Sports, and we're speaking with NBA player Tarek Black. Tarek, what I could only imagine is being in LA with all the celebrities that end up being courtside. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> what was the one celebrity that you were like, man, I can't I can't even believe this dude knows my name. I don't know how to put it because it doesn't really blow me. Like it, they're normal people. Uh huh. They're your average people. They just got a little money. Uh huh. So Snoop Dogg saying, "What's for shizzle, my?" <laughs> it's it's cool. To, it's, it's very cool to me. I'm, don't get me wrong. Okay. It's, it's not like my head is so hot. No. Jack Nicholson. It's very cool. Honestly, what's blowing me away more than anything is is because I have a passion for basketball. Uh huh. The NBA play NBA legends that know my name. Like oh, I okay. like I met Michael Jordan. I saw Jordan in Charlotte this year. I was I, we went to the gym one day. We had a day off, but a couple of us went to the gym and played. And I left my phone in the locker room, so we were walking back to the hotel. But I had to walk back and get my phone. And he pulled up, and as I was walking out, he was walking in, and we stopped. And he was like, "Yes, yeah, so y'all just got through practicing." And I was like, and I just stopped, and I was like, oh, the greatest. <laughs> That's all I said. Yeah. I said, oh, the greatest. He just, he did exactly, he started laughing. And I was like, yeah, we just got done playing. Like, oh, yes, yeah, I saw the practice, whatever. And we had a little conversation. But, like, Charlotte wanted to come get me when I left Houston. So he knows who I am. Okay. And then um, I saw Isaiah Thomas in a, in, a, in a hotel in Orlando. And he stopped okay. me in a hotel lobby. He was like, I love your game. I saw you at Summer League. You're going to be great. Clyde Drexler stopped me and my dad oh, in wow. Houston. Is that right? And stopped me and my dad in Houston and said, Tar, you're going to be a max deal player. You should be like Moses Malone. I want to work with you. I want to have time because you're going to be great. Shaq stopped me in the back this season, this year, and was like, man, do what you have to do. Work hard, and you're going to be all right. You're going to be pretty good. And so, like, when you have... <laughs> wow, man, that's, good. that's so cool. When you have guys like that, and before, when I first got to L.A., my rookie year, Kobe got hurt. Like, almost as soon as I got there, I played one game with him in Cleveland, so I really didn't know him. But that summer leading to the next season, his security was saying, man, out of everybody, Kobe loves you. He loves you, man. He wants, y'all need to have lunch. Like, he wants to set up lunch with you. I didn't end up having time, but once the season started, we would sit on the plane and talk all the time. Mm-hmm. And he would direct me, go go meet with so-and-so, so-and-so. You talk, you need to read this book. You need to do this. And so he knew who I was. Even before we got a chance to really play with each other, he was like, nah, like, like they were telling me, Tark, you're, you're the guy that Kobe respects like that. And he showed it by some of the things that he allowed me to do with him that other guys, it was just me and him, that other guys didn't, didn't get that opportunity. And right. so that's the thing that really gets me. The other celebrities, they're just people with some money, you know, but you're, you're a normal person, like right. you're your average person. But when you're talking about idols that come to you and, 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 and know who you are, right. like really know who you are, Kevin McHale being my coach saying, the white tar is gonna dunk on you, and yeah, Tar and him starting me in the NBA, and this is arguably one of the greatest power forwards in, in in NBA history. Right. When you're in a situation like that, then you're saying like, oh my god. I gotta ask you this. You mentioned it. Two years in LA. What's the record that you? Hold? Oh, so my rookie year, I got 19 rebounds, and it's the most rebounds posted by a rookie since like the 60s or the 50s. And wow. so I'm tied. Wow. I'm tied with um, one other person. I forgot who it was for most rebounds in a single game by a rookie. That's great. That's great. That's great. See, yeah. See what you find out. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I, I'm I'm good like that. You know, one of these days. <laughs> You know, you will come to respect the talent that I bring to this this union of us. You know this uh, this product that we have. So you know, you were lucky. You glad you glad God uh, talked you, to me. And, when you and, get back to LA, think about me. <laughs> <laughs> feel my pain. You feel my pain and what I have to go through with this crazy man. But uh, thanks for being back with us, man. And uh, we 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 appreciate it. Like I said, we're we're too proud of you. 
Uh, and keep Absolutely. As, as Shaq told you, keep doing what you're doing, baby. I appreciate it. Thank you. you. Go, you're going to be a pretty good player. And when <laughs> you get a max <laughs> deal, uh, we, we, we need investment over on this end. I hear you. <laughs> I hear you. We'll be back with more R&R on sports after this. Oh, get out the way. Get out the way. Get out the way. And we are back. It's time for us to say goodbye to all our company. Um, Bye, y'all. We're headed toward the door. And as we do, as is our way, every week we turn around and wave at you and give you some parting words. Out of (laughs) 5,000. Beyond that. (laughs) JC, what you got? I got Tamika Ketchings, who was one of my favorite volunteers, favorite WNBA players, who is now in the front office of the Pacers. Good for her. She also Good has a cute her. little tea shop called Tea Teamy, I think. Teamy. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, All right. Oh, nice. She she's, likes some tea. She's been on R and R. She has. That's just my baby daddy. That's yeah. just my baby daddy. I got baby daddy got, and got, pants. Got, oh, we, no, 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 no. See, what you don't know is we got breaking news. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Howard is mm-hmm. the baby. Look at him Serena's blushing. Baby daddy. So, so we got a celebrity in the house. We do. Are you going to be a kept man now? It's not really how it is. <laughs> what happened It's was? Uncle Rage and stuff. <laughs> you know, I always did love that girl. She a pretty girl. And she got a little too frisky one night. <laughs> and now this. And she backed that up. Watch it now. Watch out there. I got Serena's Watch baby daddy and I got pants and this is the token white girl. All right, all right, all right. Uh, but I want to say... Congratulations to uh, Colin Kaepernick for being one of Time yes. Magazine's top um, people, 100, I guess, people. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, mm-hmm. everything that he's doing. Go and young man, uh, go. we're keeping an eye on him, want him to hurry up and get connected with a, a new team. Yes, please. All right, all right, all right. With that, we will say take care of yourselves, take care of each other. Be sure to be back with us next week, same time, same station. Ciao. R&R on Sports. We out. R&R on Sports is recorded live at LPI Studios in the heart of Memphis, Tennessee. Web designer Daniel Coates. Executive producer Larry Robinson. Written by Howard Robertson. And produced by Reggie Fine. R&R on Sports. Part of the Kazuki and Network.